Okay, so I'm, I'm going to talk just on the general theme of love and, uh, and also uh, romantic love and uh, just my thoughts on that. Uh, this might be controversial. Uh, I'm sure, I think it will probably be very controversial for most people who views on love, but anyway, there you go. Um, so love, uh, for me, there is, um, <clears throat> I'm from a, an, a, an addiction background. I mean, the, the thing for me with love, I mean, true love for me is unconditional. Unconditional uh, for me actually would be non-dualistic. It's let it, even letting go of the idea there's a me and a you, so that the love it just radiates out equally all the time to everyone uh, equally. And there's no sort of um, individual baggage like I love you more, or I love you less, or I love you more because, you know, uh, uh, your hair color is really nice. That's why I love you more. And, you know, I love you too, but I love you less because uh, you haven't got a good haircut today. So. Uh, that, that for me is the individual uh, ego's uh, perception and its own internal baggage of what's more lovable, what's less lovable. Uh, I really like, <clears throat> I mean, my, my own frame is, I mean, that's the highest level of love, which I aspire to, I mean, as a spiritual student. Um, in terms of uh, love uh, and, uh, oh yes, the other thing I would say with love is actually, you know, I do get attached to people. Uh, or I can get attached to, to women or fantasize around women or whatever it is. But for me, that's, um, that's a block to love. You know, personalizing love and getting attached to people uh, and making a story about them. Actually, for me, if I did get attached to someone and I go, oh, I really like this person, whether it's romantic or non-romantic, and I've, I felt a real connection, then I would, I would try and let go of my attachments my individual attachments to that person and my story uh, and all my associations with that person to, so that they would be as a sacrifice of my individual ego perceptions on them so that I could radiate a higher level of love for them. And that would be, so it'd be sacrificing my individual love to be able to radiate um, a higher love and, and sort of help them in, in, in that way as, as for me, true love would sacrifice is, is what's the capacity to sacrifice. And then, it, you know, you get beyond the realms of individual love, you know, then what is real love and, and real sacrifice of the ego's attachments and perce perceptions and preference. And then it becomes divine. You know, if there's love of everyone and every animal and every plant equally in the whole world, and, uh, and then one sees spirituality as getting out of the way so a love can shine forth without the ego blocking and having its uh, baggage or belief systems in the way, then the, the love radiates forth without the individuality or the individual, uh, individuality of a self-centered self and others so that that love radiates equally onto all animals, plants uh, and beings equally. And that for me would be the highest form of surrendering love, um, uh, surrendering one's uh, ego, uh, uh, separated ego uh, life to that of the divine, and you know, which is the same, um, love of God and love of everything in this world equally, um, which is for me the, the highest form. Anyway, that, that sounds quite lofty, but, um, but it, I mean, it's also my, my views. Like if I really loved someone because I was attached to them, I thought, you know, you've, well, I get attached to people who help me or show love towards me. But then I think, well, if you really love them, let go of any perception or attachment so you can radiate the highest vibration. You know, it's power versus force and attachments for me are, are a block. Also for me, you know, um, as, as a, uh, if you could say, coming from an addiction background, you know, the thing with um, love and lust and romantic stuff uh, can easily go. And I think uh, Hawkins in Letting Go wrote something very, very beautiful. Uh, around that. And I think there is such a confusion, especially in the literature, about, you know, love meaning, I love you so much, you know, and if you left me, I'd kill myself. I think this is, this is what we'd call uh, addiction or infatuation, you know, uh, and often uh, in lower spiritual conditions, I would be prone to, you know, idolizing someone romantically or, or whatever and going into fantasy because it's a kind of, um, it's, a, it's an escape. Um, and um, I think Hawkins in Letting Go does talk, uh, you know, 
I think very, very beautifully on the subject. Um, the signs of uh, addictive types love is uh, that infatuation with someone, which is actually 125, it's, it's desire. Um, and uh, that infatuation actually leads to uh, a lack of spiritual connection and actually eventually leads to unmanageability. Um, I really like what uh, I think originates from uh, Ramana, which is if you see an object like a human, or if let's say I, I saw a girl that I was infatuated with, then it would be like the room would light up and you'd feel more happy when they're there and you'd feel less happy when they're gone. So then that shows um, what I call an, an ego mechanism. I'm not saying it's good or bad, it just depends. But is it for me an ego mechanism of uh, that person has been imbued with specialness or glamour or importance or meaning? And so if the ego is projecting and there's enough baggage in the ego, it's like when you see them, you light up, you feel really, really happy or whatever it is. And, and then when they're gone, you feel like you miss them. And that for me um, is coming out of uh, various, various factors. But for me, that, that is um, the level of up and down that happens when they're there and when they're not there. Uh, for me, are a level of disconnection from the inter. So when you're at a very high level of consciousness, where you're happy and, and in the flow and at peace and joy all the time, then the effect of meeting people doesn't tend to have a huge up and down effect uh, because you're already in a very high state. If you're at a low state uh, and you meet, you meet someone you're infatuated with, uh, you could go into a very high state. So they're a bit like a a drug or they numb you out and you, be, and you become very obsessed for them. Um, also, but also if you're in a low state and you, and you meet someone at a very high level of consciousness, um, you can also, you also go into a higher state because the, you, basically their elevated state of consciousness is lifting up your temporarily lower state. So I think as um, coming from a Ramana Maharishi, uh, an Indian enlightened uh, sage, the thing of if you get if something if something outside of you is making you more happy or more illuminated, then it's probably because there's an attribution of um, wantingness of the ego wants to see that person again, and and then because you've got them, you know, the ego shuts up for a while, and you feel a greater connection to the divine within. But it's not the person uh, that uh, that's doing it; it's you're wanting that person. Um, also, uh, in terms of you know destiny. I, you know, my view, I mean, Hawkins talks about, I mean, I agree with reincarnation, even my, everything in my life suggests that, and muscle testing, um, the, there are past lives, and, uh, and there is such thing as good karma and bad karma, and you can actually do past life hypnosis regression and start to intuit who you are, who the people are from your past lifetimes who are back here in a good way or a bad way in this lifetime, and sometimes I, I really do believe that, um, you know, uh, romantic stuff and non-romantic stuff. You, you meet these people again, you might've been a parent or a child or whatever it is, and they're back. And it's probably if you've been a good parent uh, or you've, you've done good, your good karmic bank account with them is good. You will meet them, there'll be an attraction to them, whether it's good or bad. And you probably get involved with them because it's such karmic necessity to undo either with good karma or bad karma, the baggage that still exists karmically between two. So probably if you've helped someone in a really good way in past life, they may be back. And every time you meet them, you know, they help you out. You may also be drawn or be forced into situations with people who, because of the past life associations and karma and baggage, you know, everything that happens around them is bad. I do think as well, there can be, you know, attractions. You know, I'll give an example of something romantic that hypothetically could happen. Like in a past lifetime, um, you know, I might have uh, seduced a woman and pretended to be nice and offer a good deal and then been a nightmare to live with. So in this lifetime, they, you know, the, the soul may be back and it'll seem, oh, this, this, this woman looks really nice and get involved and it's a nightmare. And there's a karmic payback until what needs to be learnt from that is done and they can be released. Um, anyway, I think I'll stop it there for the time being. I could probably talk.